So obviously everyone build, everyone grows up in some form of bubble and environment, yeah. and, and that's the way it is. And most of the time, you need to break out of it to, to achieve what you really want to achieve. Uh, obviously, this is a podcast, but obviously when I get up and speak as well, it doesn't take me long to start getting quite fired up, and people start picking that up in the room. We are lucky that we can choose what we want to do in this life. You know, we're not getting drafted into war. It's that saying, isn't it? You know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get out of the room. You know, you need, you need to be in a room where you're not the smartest person and, and you're learning and being inspired by other people. Right here. Dorian, thanks for coming in, mate. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. But uh, I met you, uh, well, I didn't meet you personally, but I seen you at D's 5D event in Cardiff. I uh, thought to myself, you're a great speaker up on stage. You've obviously got like a lot going on in your life and I thought it'd be good to get you in. I was wondering, can you give me like a little bit of insight into what you do just to start and then we'll take it back and, and see how you got there? Sure, yeah, yeah, thank you. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, D's event was very good and uh, the problem is when I get on stage and start talking, I can't really uh, close my mouth, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, no, yeah, look, everybody uh, listening, my name is Dorian Payne and I am, again, as well, based in South Wales and uh, I am the managing director of Cast Seth Group which is a property development company based in South Wales. And we specialise in building high quality, social, affordable and disabled homes. Um, and we, we work with, we collaborate with investors and we specialise in forward selling to registered social landlords in a nutshell. But my sort of background is, uh, you know, it's quite diverse. So I'll, if it's okay, I'll spend a couple of minutes just going into it. Yeah, go for it, mate. Uh, give some context for all the stuff we're about to talk about. So uh, I'm I'm very fortunate. I was born into a family of sort of, uh, I was born into a, a family of active property investors, so to speak. My dad is a builder. Uh, he had a sort of factory building, uh, sorry, manufacturing windows, and he also had a building company and various things. So a lot going on then yeah. in the household, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, and it was all business, you know. There was, there was no sport or anything like that. It was my dad worked hard, he worked late, he didn't come back. Uh, proper old school, traditional, if that makes sense. You know, he was the worker. My mum was a stay-at-home mum. And uh, when he came home, it was just, he was still taking phone calls, like 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and that's what I mean. Yeah, we, di we didn't have anything like sports or he didn't take us to things like that. And I, I'm not saying that in a bad way. You know, I've, I've had a lot of other positives from that. But my sort of life, the way it started, was very much geared towards business and, and property yeah. at a young age. Yeah, obviously set you up for a good start then in that. Well, yeah, it can Domain. it can do, but it was definitely an opportunity that I had to seize, if that makes sense. So, like, um, I, I was probably destined to be an electrician. You know, my, my dad and mum became accidental landlords. They bought a property, didn't like it, bought another one, and it, it kind of kept started yeah. like that. And then sort of my dad, with his building team, started doing them up, keeping them, refinancing them, and uh, my mum, just instinctively, and my mum would then deal with uh, renting them out. But they've both done really well for themselves, considering that uh, they've left school with kind of no qualifications or anything like that. Uh, you know, they struggle to read and write. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that, they really have. But it's amazing to see what they've done. But I was on site when I was really young in school, um, in, in the summer holidays, on the weekends, with my dad. I, like I said, I was destined to be an electrician. My, oldest, my, my middle brother, Billy, uh, he was you know plumber, gas engineer, so to speak. Yeah. But he loved being on site, and I, I hated it. You know, I was... <laughs> I was, you know, I was sweeping up and making the tea. That's not really what electricians are meant to do, are they? So yeah, no, didn't fancy it then, do you? Kind of put you off, did it? A little yeah, bit. well, I, I was I was quite young, but things like, you know, the usual stuff, stripping wallpaper, sweeping up, and the problem is when you're your dad's son on site, anything you do is, is wrong. Yeah, yeah, I bet he's on your case more than everyone else's. Definitely, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I worked uh, with my dad for a couple of years, like, you? prior to getting the job I'm in now, and, yeah, it, it tests you, like, because I was living with him as well. I'm sure you, well, obviously the same. And it, it does make it quite difficult sometimes at home when, like, bringing up work and stuff. And you just can't help it. It seeps over, like, doesn't it? Yeah, that, that has been what my family life has been like growing up, where everything was work. Everything, all discussions all come back to work. And now for me, it's a big problem for me. <laughs> because yeah. in, in my family life now, obviously this is when I was really young. In my family life now, that's the thing. I, I instinctively want, and even in social settings, I instinctively want to talk about business. You know, I cannot talk about normal social, just uh, What things. happened at the weekend? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It starts off like that. And then when it, uh, very quickly, I'll turn it to a business <laughs> aspect. It's just... Just the way it is. Just passionate about it, though, I suppose, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as I said, I, over the years, I realised I didn't like being on the site, and I wanted to do something different. And I'll be honest with you, when I was really young, 
all I wanted to be was uh, like a gazillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's dreaming it. Uh, yeah, Is exactly. that a number? No, I, <laughs> I wanted to be extremely wealthy. And uh, that was one of my guiding problems. But I was always quite entrepreneurial then. So in school growing up, you know, I would save my dinner money and I would, that kind of started things. Uh, and I would sell things you're not supposed to sell in school, like <laughs> like, like the good old Richmonds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, I did a bit of that myself. Did you? <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, and Rollies rolling myself then. Aren't you? Yeah. Well, I, exactly. I was never really a smoker. You know, I just uh, I seen my competitors, so to speak. <laughs> they were doing it, but they were smoking their profits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, you were the wise one then. Yeah, I was like, I'm not smoking. I'm not smoking <laughs> this. You know. Uh, I saved the money and then I started going to boot sales and I started buying things in boot sales and selling them online on like eBay. And then that scaled up uh, and I started, I taught myself to import from China and, uh, you know, lots of business mistakes over the years. But I was, uh, can you remember the expandable hoses? Yeah. Yeah, so I used to import things like expandable hoses and uh, Chinese lanterns. Mate, it's always stuff like that that comes up when you look into it, isn't it? I like know, you go on... Alibaba or something like that's that, and it, they're yeah. always the sorts of things that come up. It's like repetitive, isn't it? It is, yeah. But this was years ago. This is when it was like they were kind of new. Yeah. And um, I was selling them in the UK, obviously online, and also at boot sales as well. And I was I was literally tripling my money, yeah. literally tripling my money. So, uh, and it was going really well. But when I made one of my first fundamental business mistakes, that uh, I put all of my money back in I was constantly reinvesting I still reinvest to this day you know I I, I am an all-in type of person but I'm I'll, I'll explain my risk thresholds have changed over the years but I put all my money back in and I dropped the quality because I could instead of tripling my money I could quadruple my money and I didn't get it tested over there I just had them shipped over just assuming you know that I, and and if you could imagine outside my my dad's house a big attic lorry turning up <laughs> and unloading containers worth of expandable hoses with my logo on it how old are you at this age oh this, i must have been like 18 back then really yeah, so yeah. I've, I've obviously skimmed through a few years that's the thing my story overlaps a bit i because no that's cool i was just wondering like to yeah yeah pinpoint it you know for, so, for uh, people yeah yeah definitely but uh there's some progression behind that but i genuinely thought i'd be bigger than amazon <laughs> it's quite funny looking at it. i had my logo on it you know, it was called paying homeware. Yeah. <laughs> you can imagine it. It's quite funny, isn't it? You never know, though, do you? That's how these stories happen, man. No, no. Well, Amazon started with a, a website and yeah, you know, a book, I, like, wasn't yeah. it? A book, a book store, book, like, yeah, it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? Crazy, yeah, it is. Back then, God, I dread to think where I'd have been like in a dot, dot com boom. I would have probably had a million websites, you know, <laughs> or going to every going to every venture capitalist. Uh, but anyway, like I said, I, I sold them. And then, unfortunately, I had to do a major product recall. People were plugging the hoses in. It was expanding, expanding and then just exploding, basically. So I lost all of my money. I still have some of those hoses to date. And, uh, yeah, the other thing as well, I, I did some research and realized, you know, if, if those at the head of successful companies, what do they typically do? And most of them, when I did the research back then, the, the trend was they were in finance or accounting. So I, I studied to be an accountant and... Uh, Behind all of that, and this is what I mean by overlapping, so whilst I was doing all of that, I was helping my mum because I didn't like being on site. I wanted to work with my mum in terms of the management, property management. Yeah. So I was doing that then as well whilst I was in high school. And over the years, I taught myself how to, uh, you know, be a successful kind of letting agent um, uh, and do everything properly. So I did formal qualifications and things like that. But when I was 16, uh, I didn't stay on to A-levels. I went to college to study accountancy part-time and I then set up a letting agency. And, you know, there was a bit of conflict in college. I was taking some calls and things like that. <laughs> uh, but if you could imagine, uh, I, w I, I did that by cold calling landlords and basically introducing myself and saying, oh, hello, uh, you know, I see you have a property for rent. We have a list of tenants uh or we, ha or to be honest with you, the, the main thing I did was found a landlord with, that had a, a property for rent, and I would sit, ring them up and say, "Hi, my name's Dorian from so and so." I wouldn't even say the company. Uh, I've seen your property online. We've actually already got a tenant. We've just let another one, but they're fully referenced. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't take both of them on. Don't really want to see them to waste. Do you mind if I show them yours? I'll take the fee from them, and you won't have to pay me anything. But they're a very good tenant. I don't want them to go to waste. Nearly all the time, they would say yes, but that would be getting the foot in the door. Yeah. And then if Smart. you well, 
if you is bending the rules a bit because bending the truth a bit. If you imagine, then you were the landlord stood outside your property, and all of a sudden you hear a fifty cc moped turn around the corner <laughs> with L plates. And a cam- did you tuck that like down the road a little bit and walk? <laughs> no, out no, I'd, you- I'd pull up with it, <laughs> and the camera strapped around my shoulder. Yeah, and I'd turn up and say, "Oh, I'm very sorry. The tenants just cancelled. They found somewhere." However, I literally have another one. I just, I just need to take these photos and send it to them. Is that okay? I was already there. They already opened up. So they'd always say yes. Took the photos, sent it to a list of tenants that luckily already had because uh, we were already involved in renting properties. And that is literally how it started in yeah. a nutshell. Fair play. That's uh, taking the initiative there, isn't it, really? <laughs> and just rolling with it. But Yeah, and not not being afraid of, uh, of rejection. and, yeah. and obje- Like, I've always suffered with age discrimination and stuff, but it's just the way it is, you know, you've got to... Did, did like, your mum and dad, were they part of this? Did they know no. what was going on? They knew what was going on, but they've always been, uh, <laughs> in, in a nice way, cynical, you know, in terms of... My mum and dad are very good now at what they do, but they, they stick to what they do. You know, there's no need to change what they do. And they're kind of lifestyle landlords and they're still buying things. And I'm still heavily involved in the portfolio, mainly on the financial side, raising money and things like that for when they need it. But um, yeah, yeah, they, they they weren't involved in, in that. That was yeah. pretty much me. But over the years then, I, I become a qualified accountant. I scaled the business into an estate agency. Uh, and I, I scaled that into a residential finance and commercial brokerage, obviously taking on staff, employing people, learning lessons along the way, uh, sold my business to a local competitor. Uh, it, I made loads of mistakes for that business. You know, it wasn't as successful as it should have been, but uh, it, it, invaluable lessons. How old are you now? If you're 26. 26. Yes. So they're like, there's no excuses really, is there? Like, it's <laughs> mad, isn't it? I, you know, you are where you are at your age is obviously... A, we're not seeing the hard work that's gone on in between, like talking right now. But yeah, yeah. Like I've been doing this for like over ten years, basically. It's it's sometimes a bit hard to understand that you know. Touch wood, I believe my knowledge level is quite. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a massive nerd. When I le- I wasn't a nerd in school, but when I left school and started focusing on really what I was passionate about, which is which is property investment and development and business, I've just become a, a massive, massive nerd. I've dissected literally hundreds and hundreds of books and uh, and learned from people. But yeah, there's been a there's been a tremendous amount of work that's gone into it. It's yeah. not just happened. Did, did your parents like always back you in everything you were doing? Was there always like support there, or was there? Because I know like a lot of people, they may get put off by their parents or whatever because they'd be like, "Oh, I don't know, that's risky," or you know, is, was there that going on? Or? Yeah, no, no. Like, again, and I mean this in a nice way. My parents were exactly the same. Every time I was going to do something new or do things new, they basically told me I shouldn't. And until I proved them that it was working. Uh, you know, they, they were kind of against what I was doing. It's, uh, and But unfortunately, I or fortunately, I've been the type that, uh, rightly or wrongly, you know, you will make mistakes with this kind of attitude, being confident enough in myself that whatever happens, you know, I will, I'll, make, I'll make it work. And also, once you start doing some serious research and studies about successful people, successful businesses, you realise that vast majority of them have that as well, you know. And my one, one one advice to anybody listening is, it's okay to seek advice from relatives and friends and, and other people. However, there is a clear definition between uh, difference between like general advice and and pure wisdom, and it mainly stems from if somebody's already done what you're trying to do, then that's gen generally wisdom. But if if someone's not done what you're trying to do or not interested in doing what you're trying to do, it's just general advice based on their own personal beliefs, really. And that is massive because my parents didn't haven't haven't done those types of businesses, you know. They they haven't. Yeah. And um I learned a lot from them in terms of property investment, although again they didn't know the the theory behind it. They were doing everything instinctively, which is which is phenomenal considering what they've done. But I'm you know, I've been exposed and I've been in, in bank meetings, you know, just I've been in lots and lots of meetings and, and property purchases from residential, semi-commercial, commercial, industrial land over the years. But I'm just like a massive sponge, like the sponge you can see behind me now, you know, it's yeah, yeah. absorbing the sound. Well, that's me <laughs> just absorbing the sound and trying to take it in and do well, something. That's good, mate. I think, you know, there's there's a lot of people like you see, it's so easy, like you said, I think when people are just telling you you can't do something, a lot of the time that's just like them telling themselves they couldn't do it. Yeah. And, and this, they're, they're just bouncing it onto you because they're afraid... They think about themselves doing it instantly. When you say I'm going to do this, they think, 
that wouldn't work for me. That's not going to work for you. And they want to put their fears onto you, don't they? Ma- massively. And unfortunately, like I said, you know, the vast majority of people in, in society, they have they have inherent beliefs already. Most of the time, the beliefs, they don't even know their beliefs. It's just, it's just the way people have brought up. It's just the, what they've been exposed to and also what's important to them in life. Uh, and yeah, those beliefs, when everybody, when anybody talks to them about an idea or a decision, it's um, their beliefs come out. And I'll give you a prime example. So uh, considering now, like I've told you about my, my sort of family background, my parents and what I've been involved in, uh, they, uh, you know, on, on paper are, are successful. And, and I, as an experiment to my brother, wrote down a list of businesses, 100 businesses, right, business ideas. And each business itself is a multi, multi, multi million, some billion, multi-billion industries. And I, my dad was sat there, my brother was sat to the right of him. And I said to him, look, I'm, I'm going into business. I want you to be serious with me because my dad's never serious with me. I said, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to just say these businesses, right? And I just want you to say to me if you think it's a good idea or not. I went through the hundred businesses and property investment was in it. And this is what they do. And he said no to every single one of them. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. But what, what were some of them? Like, have you got any of them on the just, top of your head? Well, literally, if you look around you, there's most, there's, you know, there's a multi-million industry in nearly everything, in yeah. everything you look around, clothing, what you're wearing now, you know, uh, AV equipment, what we're, what we're using. And, uh, you know, property investment, of course, that's a multi-billion industry. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I just had a whole list of everything, stuff I was already doing, finance brokerage, uh, you know, estate agency, uh, you know, even stuff that he was doing before, window factory, yeah, building company. Uh, but yeah, he said no to every single one of them. Did he give you a reason why? He gave me these reasons, but, but it all comes down to the fact that now in his stage of life, if he did something like that, where he took a risk, he's built up something valuable and successful. Inherently, now he's got this fear of loss. Yeah, and that comes across in decisions then they make. But that is like it. Whoever's listening, whoever they speak to in life about anything, one of the best things that's happened to me, and I read it in a book, was that you know you need to understand or try to get a glimpse of why they're saying what they're saying. You know, they, they're giving you advice, but then you've got to see where they are in their life. Uh, you know, what they've what what they've done, what's important to them, and uh, lots of different things. You know, what what if they've done anything relevant or interested in doing it? Yeah, Do you know that's kind of why I'm doing this. To be honest with you, it's kind of like getting people in here to share their stories, their experiences, their real life. Yeah, and then hopefully the people listening can see and like. I think being around people like yourself, like people who are successful at like UFC fighters, stuff like that, you get something from the way they speak that can inspire you to go and do it yourself. Because if there's people out there doing it, it can be done, can't it, at the end of the day? And Massive, it's yeah. who you surround yourself with that makes yeah, yeah. a lot of difference to what you believe is possible for you. Yeah. How, how did you then break out of, like, because you, you kind of are your environment to a certain degree, aren't you? How yeah. did you then break out and have that confidence in yourself? Yeah, so obviously everyone build, everyone grows up in some form of bubble and environment, yeah. and, and that's the way it is. And most of the time, you need to break out of it to to achieve what you really want to achieve. But but it starts right there. Most people don't actually know what they want. They, they know they want something different, but they don't actually know what they want. Now, I'm very lucky and fortunate that I've, I've actually n- always known what I want. It's changed. Brazil, you know. Well, yeah, that's changed. So, <laughs> so, so I was more focused then on making money, right? Money was the most important thing. But I can safely say now, hand on heart, that now I've actually fallen completely in love with the process. And uh, uh, money is a byproduct now of, of, of trying to strive to be the very best at what I do. That, that is literally what now drives me is I don't do what I do anymore for, for the money, so to speak. If you, if you check my team, I'm one of the lowest paid members of my, of my yeah. team, but I, I'm no, I'm not, I like doing the deals. I like watching the business grow. I like achieving goals and I like striving for things that people have said is not possible. You know, uh, I like in terms of my story a second, uh, I, I kind of ended it at that stage where I said about obviously the family business and, and the other business I was in, but I broke out and I started working with investors 
And that was a big difference that my parents have never, ever worked with investors, ever at all. It's been through uh, equity they built in, through refurbs uh, yeah. or capital appreciation, and then money through banks, traditional banks as well, not never challenger banks. So I started changing that when I became a finance broker and, and leverage more and all that sort of stuff, still safely. But I broke out because I started networking. Again, it's all about who. And I started traveling the country. I was pretty much doing a road show, if that means. So I, was yeah. I traveled the country and I was spent, spending a lot of time at networking events, um, getting connected to people. And, you know, fortunately, my experience even then, and that I was my late teens, uh, 20 maybe, uh, and my experience was coming across. And, you know, fortunately, investors believed in me and I started raising money to do my own deals. That's what broke me out of my bubble. But it all started with me building experience and knowledge and then building a network yeah. and, and getting exposed to what other people are doing. I see you're still all around the place now. You, you go to lots, lots of events. Well, that's how I come across you. And, exactly, yeah. But it works, doesn't it? Obviously, it, like, it, it people works. see you talk or something like that. Yes. Like you stuck in my head afterwards, I have to find that guy on like Instagram or whatever, see if he'll come down and have a chat. It works, doesn't it? Obviously, it does. it's like that personal connection, even though... I didn't know you until you came here. Yeah. You still kind of feel like, oh, yeah, I think there's there's something there to talk about. Do you know what I mean? Definitely, yeah. And, uh, you know, whenever I talk, I get quite f fired up. I don't know, uh, you know, I'm trying to hold myself back a little bit at the minute because, you know, it's uh, uh, obviously this is a podcast. But obviously when I get up and speak as well, it doesn't take me long to start getting quite fired up. And people start picking that up in the room. Uh, and, and it just makes things people want want to speak to you you know they want to hear more and and understand but that's what happened i started working with investors and i, I was doing all the traditional property stuff buying my own single units doing refurbs multi-units going into commercial conversions going into new build development I, I then did a new build development with an investor and i couldn't sell it because it was open market and made me realize all sold in the end investor was paid back etc everything's fine i've always paid investors back sometimes late but i've made them well aware in advance you know it's just it's just the way it is in property unfortunately they need to be aware of the risks and uh back in back at that time I, it just had a little blip in the market but then i realized that my ambition level was high i what i always wanted to build something big and make a big difference and I realized that I couldn't sustain the sort of liquidity. I wasn't liquid enough to sustain losses in property, big losses, or, or, or ride out market dips and stuff like that. So I wanted something to kind of take away the market risk. And I came across social, affordable and disabled housing in Wales, where I could forward sell to housing associations, which is a phenomenal sort of... So uh, forward sell, sorry, just because sure. I'm not like as financially no, no. knowledgeable as you what what does that mean is that like you've agreed a price prior to it going on the market exactly or, that yeah. so is uh, have you've agreed a price prior to you kind of you're forward selling it so yeah i'm 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 doing a development of 10 apartments but i've already sold it to you before i've even done any work on these 10 apartments if that makes sense so as long as you don't overspend on the actual build then you're you know you're in profit yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely and all that then comes down to uh, risk management and, and processes and due diligence, et cetera, to, to get the right uh, systems in place to stop you. Anyway, I'm going on. But what I mean is that I, I that happened and it was a massive revelation for me because I just thought, do you know what? This, there's a huge demand for social and affordable housing across Wales and England. Huge shortfall. We're in a, we're in a housing crisis. I think everybody's aware of that. But in England, I believe the shortfall is 145,000 homes a year just in social. Really, and affordable. Yeah. yeah. And in uh, Wales, it's 3,500 a year. The Office of National Statistics showed that in Wales, just over 1,000 was built last year, uh, which still means there's you know, 2,000 to 2,500 a year not being built. So they've got a backlog and a yearly shortfall. So, uh, you know, I just that's what we've been doing. So Castell Group specializes in that and I started yeah. raising money with investors I already had built a big pipeline and secured then I, I started doing some some high level uh, meetings with like family offices and venture funds and other and REIT funds and things like that in London and I secured investment from a family office and fast forward today Castell Group has a secured pipeline of 280 homes in its pipeline uh, a circa 45 million GDV of forward sold contracts and we've got a target, a phase one target of building 250 homes a year, which is circa in Wales about 50 million a year. 
we've got the financial uh, infrastructure to get there now and we've got a fantastic team. Our team's growing rapidly. So it's very exciting time. Very exciting time. Yeah, it sounds exciting, mate. Yeah. So you threw a lot of numbers out there. like so. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. But for like you personally, what does that do for you? Like is that, or do you keep it in the company? So I, I'm a massive reinvest reinvestor yeah so uh like i said i've sold a portion of the company uh and i've sold 10 percent of the company i own 90 percent and uh i'm I'm literally in legals right now selling another 10 percent to the same family office so i will i will own 80 percent they will own 20 percent but we will have a very strong financial uh footing to help us uh you know facilitate that level of growth yeah and uh but i'm still a massive uh, in terms of the numbers, so like I said, the, the, the gross development value of those, so the, the sale prices are circa 45 million, but that's total, that's not yearly. We're, we're set to sort of turn over 10 million this financial year. Uh, fi- we're you know, officially breaking 10 million uh, this financial year, which is obviously a phenomenal achievement for us. Yeah, 100%. But we've, we've still got a lot to do, but like I said, our phase one goal is to get into this 250 homes a year, high quality homes as well. And everything we build is a minimum EPCA, which is energy performance rating. So, class is sustainable, obviously, you know, for the for the environment. Uh, and and yeah, look, it's very exciting. All I can think of is what reinvestment I can do into the company to to grow it even more. You know, there's so much opportunity and potential, and I just really want to be the very best at what we do. You know, I'm I'm very very system and process driven. Uh, I, I do a tremendous amount of self development. I'm currently studying for my masters in quantity surveying. And uh, and I've also I'm I'm enrolled onto the Cranfield uh, Business Growth Program. Have you heard of that? I haven't. No. So it's a business growth program. Basically, it's uh, for scaling businesses. Uh, companies like Hotel Chocolat, uh, Go Ape, and Cobra Beer. They've been on that type of yeah. program. And uh, yeah, there's. Uh, I, I'm just very much still in the stage of of, of learning and growing and surrounding myself with very good people. That, that's all I'm interested in doing. Yeah, but well, you're still like mega young aren't you for what you're doing do you know what I mean so there's obviously a lot of room to grow there and like in the future you've got like however many years you want to carry on working do you do you ever like consider if you got like a work-life balance at all no no so <laughs> uh, yeah I li- literally you know I can I can say this and and people watching you know that I'm not I'm not I'm not saying my way of life is the best way at all I, I'm just saying you know you find something that you really love doing and uh and, and build your own life the way you want to do it so for myself there, there's a very uh, the, the, the work-life balance kind of isn't there, but the problem is that I love what I do so much that it just does not feel like work. It just yeah. does not feel like work at all. So that's my biggest problem. Uh, you know, I'm very fortunate. I have such a supportive wife. So I, I'm married. I have two kids, a one-year-old and a three-year-old, two boys. And, you know, I probably don't do as much as I should do, unfortunately. Uh, and that, that is my biggest problem. But do, do you think that'll be like a regret in the future? With the, like, the kid side of things a little bit? I just don't know. I just don't know. It's very difficult. To live it out of you, I suppose. Yeah, it's it's very difficult to explain. And I might come across as quite, uh, you know, you know, I'm just talking to you real, basically. You know, that, that's what the podcast is. That's right, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, and, and people won't admit it, but you know, it could be a, it could be a regret. I don't know. It could be a mistake. All I know is, in this moment of time, I, I try to give my best. You know, I put my kids to bed nearly every night still. Uh, you know, and uh, I still spend time, some time with them, and I try to do something on the weekend with them. Yeah. But I just love what I do so much, and I've got such a big vision and aspiration that that I just I find it very difficult to. I'm quite I, I, at the moment. I'm in very much an obsessed phase. Yeah, you know, it's just, and, I, and I'm not trying to dig at you with no, that. No, I'm, no, it's, it's just no, it's right. It's the right for, question for a lot of people. They're like, oh, I can't do that. I haven't got the time. I understand? And, yeah. And, People, you know, I, I, I'm probably very similar, like the other way. I'm like, oh, if I do that, I've got to give up time with like the family and stuff like that. But then, yeah. you know, maybe long term, you are providing a better life for them. So it's like a toss up, isn't it? You don't know. And it is, it is. But at the end of the day, it's it's one of those things, right, that yes, of course, I'm working for my kids, but I'm, I'm not doing all of this for my kids. You know, they, they're all my kids, you know, they, they, I've, they've, I've given them a lifestyle that, and I'll give them anything they need, of course. But it's, uh, you know, there's this just this inherent drive that's very difficult to explain. And it's uh, it, it's just quite obsessive uh, trying 
I just I just want to carry on doing what I'm doing because I can see it working and growing and yeah. But yeah, I, I it's something I check in with myself to make sure I am trying to spend as much time with them as possible, and uh, you know, I, I explain to them what I do and all that sort of stuff, and I hope that doing that and getting them involved and, and never saying to them, you know, I don't have time for you. And I never say anything like that, you know, I, never at all. And I'm just, you know, it's, it's difficult. You, you, you'll you never have the right work-life balance and you never have the right time to start something. Something will always give. But on the other side, you know, I don't really, and this is just me, you know, I, I don't do things, like I hardly watch TV. Like I, most weeks I don't watch any television at all. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't smoke or drink and I don't go out clubbing or anything like that. Um, I, I don't have really friends. I don't have friends. <laughs> yeah. Was that a conscious decision then? Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Because, you know, I have sacrificed all of those to, I come across really sad right now, don't I? <laughs> I don't think so, mate. I think like, to be honest with you, them stages of my life, there was a, there was a lot of fun in them years, right? Yeah. But. I don't know. I found like for like years of going out drinking every weekend and whatever, completely suppress my emotion for like years and years and years. Yeah. So like Saturday, Sunday, just be like getting like so drunk, like you can't remember what's going on. Yeah. And then all week then you feel like numb until you go out and do it again. And I think for me that like, it was great fun at the time and I got some good memories and stuff, but that's all it is. And now I'm not living that life. It's not a forever life. Of course. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. And it's kind of, it's not a regret as such, but you know, I've had a lot of stuff I've had to deal with from doing that. Of course. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Whereas you've, 100%. you're always, you know who you are at all times, don't you? If you if you live in a clean life, you do. Yeah. And, and again, I, I need to reiterate the fact that uh, you know I don't want I don't want people to think um, you know that there's there's kind of no right or wrong. Like if 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 you in life know that you want to spend you know half of your week with your family in terms of total hours. And you are happy with a certain lifestyle and a certain job, that that is absolutely fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. The, the biggest problem is people don't know what they want. You know, I'm just lucky that I know in my heart of hearts what I want. And that's why it doesn't feel like work. It feels just like pure enjoyment. It's like a, like a, like an addict. <laughs> well, I can tell, mate, just by looking at you, like you're beaming just even talking about it, aren't you? But yeah. like, I suppose, like, for me, I go to a job which I'm not really into. Do you know what I mean? And then I come home and it leaks over. Whereas probably when you walk in through the door, if you've been doing something you love all day, it's like you're a different person, aren't you? Whereas for me, i got to do, like, certain things to get myself out of, like, maybe a bad funk or whatever. Yeah. So maybe I'm spending as much time not being present as you are by working all them hours anyway. Do you see what I mean? Like, if you're not being yourself at the time. Oh, 100%. Look, if you're in a, if you're in a position, and again, this is no dig at you, but if you are in a position uh, and you genuinely don't like it, uh, you, you will, you will just inherently attract a negative aura. And, you know, they say that there's nothing worse in life than negativity. And children, unfortunately, pick up on negativity and positivity and things like that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, what I do is stressful. Well, I have I have problems every day, but because I obviously enjoy what I do, it it doesn't feel that bad. And you know, when I do spend the time with, with the kids, uh, when I, when I'm when I'm present with them, especially as I know when they get a little bit older as well, and they they understand a bit more what I'm doing. You know, I've seen, um, you know, I do a little a lot of research into like other successful uh, and, and busy people, and I can I can I can see that it can work. It's all about communication. At, you know, it, it just is about communication and getting them involved in things so they can experience what I'm doing. And, you know, I don't want them necessarily to follow in my footsteps. I just want them to do whatever they want to do. And I will try and help facilitate that. So, yeah, it's one of those things. Is it just, yeah, it's one of those things. It's just, it? it's just finding your own happy place, isn't it? And it's yeah, different for everyone. to find what you want. Some people, like you say, they, they happily work like, I don't know, 16 hours a week and just or just be on the dole and just whatever in it. Like it is what suits you. Yeah. So So it's only like, if you're unhappy, then you've got to try and figure a way out of it. And that's the key. Exactly. Like if you are happy, you know, you don't have to compare yourself with anybody at all. It's, it's, we are lucky that we can choose what we want to do in this life. You know, we're not getting drafted into war. 
We're not getting our rights strip, stripped away from us. I don't. Well, we? I, I don't. Aren't sorry, we? sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to get into uh, controversial yeah. things. But, uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean. Uh, I, I just meant like you know we're not getting dragged away type of thing mean, and, yeah. and locked in a cage. But what I mean is that we are quite lucky that we can choose what we want to do, and this is the thing. But everyone says to me, even the same like with property development, how to get started in property development. The first thing I would say is you need to really understand what it is you're trying to get out of it and not not necessarily money. I can safely say, hand on the table right now, I am not doing what I'm doing for money anymore. It's Could, could you stop right now and live like a comfortable life? Well, if I liquidated everything I've actually invested in, I'm quite cash poor. You know, I, I constantly reinvest. It's... Uh, you know, I, obviously, there's a phase in my life where I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that back down, but I am quite. I've got a proper you know risk matrix, and you know I look at all my systemic risks, my systematic risks, my unsystematic risks. I try to uh, I try to put mitigating measures in place and all that sort of stuff. But ultimately, if you want to scale, you need, you need to reinvest. You need to reinvest if you want to, if you yeah. want to scale and make something you know well, meaningful. Especially right now, like unless your money's in something that moves with the market. You're on a loss straight away, aren't you? Because like, yeah, they, I know they talk about inflation being like, was it four or five percent? But everything is going up, yeah, of course. a lot more than that, and and, and you're never going to get that just having it sat in the bank. So no. if you earn a load of money and checked it in the bank, you're losing money straight away. So you are losing money if it's in the bank, definitely. Yeah, uh, but and um, you are, yeah. It's just a fact, isn't it? <laughs> it's at just the a moment, fact at yeah, the moment, yeah. Like, so I see, like, I speaking to um, like a relative the other day, and they're like. I got this money from someone passing or whatever. I'm just going to leave it in the bank. Like in ten years, it's going to be worthless. It Not is. worthless, but well, it, it, we're going that way, man. It's, it's go, it's, we're, going, we're going that way, <laughs> turning into Zimbabwe. But yeah, <laughs> when the, but no, uh, the problem you got is that unfortunately, we we touched on this before the podcast. The education system, the the, the natural education system, is very much geared towards the industrial revolution. Well, we we kind of we kind of passed that. You know, the the, the in, education system was brought in like the mainstream education system was brought in to uh get you know people into industry industry you know become yeah. become a capable worker and the syllabus hasn't really changed that much like i cannot believe that they still do not have any real lessons on in, in just state schools uh, on money e- even if it was like the the difference between renting and buying a house the difference between good debt and bad debt yeah you know? just like how to live your life, what's your expenses, like expense That's forms it. and stuff. Yeah. Like, To be fair, we did do them actually, like the one year, I did like a college course and then there was like an hour spare. One of the teachers went through that, but that was just completely ad hoc. Like, There was no plans for that in It's just in what he system. wanted to do or that teacher wanted yeah, to that, do. That was like invaluable, I think, for yeah. like different decisions in life. Definitely. They should literally have something, like a lesson called life skills. 100%. They, they literally need to introduce something called life skills. And in that, it's it's... It's money, how to handle money, how to budget, how to not live above your means, how to set money aside for India, yeah. how to invest. And obviously you have an actual investment class as well on things like that. Even down to like communication, relationships, oh, so all much. them sorts of things. So because, much. you know, I don't know, I bet you wouldn't get, you're quite like a, you know, you're easy to talk to. You're a good communicator. I know You know what you're saying. But like, if you weren't, I bet you wouldn't have got half the deals you've had done, would you? unfortunately not yes you're right so and i don't mean this in a bad way whatsoever but to succeed in life you need to become a salesperson and when I, what i mean by that is you need to sell yourself to the person you're speaking to you know you do need to have a pleasing personality uh, people want to need to want to speak to you uh, and there's lots of different things actually it is actually quite sci- um, uh, scientific uh, and i've actually done studies in it as well you know, Dale Carnegie's book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Have you read that? No, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. so that, you know, that, that's that's like 100 years old or something. But, you know, I've read that several times and, and negotiating books and sales books. Uh, and it doesn't matter what people say. By the time you pick up a book and finish it, you're a different person at the end of it. And I have literally read a lot, but I've also put a lot into action. And I've tried to be aware of my personality and how to, how to speak to people and deal with people Obviously, I'm not always going to get it right, but it amazes me to think that most people in life don't don't do any sort of research or study on it because yeah. it doesn't get taught to them. But you're right; it's it's the biggest skill, the biggest skill. Like I've raised millions of pounds, right, and and it's it's not been on my past experience; it's been on them believing in me. That is it. Yeah, and they can only have done that through conversations 
and getting to know me and 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 me selling myself to them. And if you were an arsehole to them, like they're never going to go with you straight away, are they? It doesn't no. matter how good you are or what you do. No. They want the experience to be nice. Yeah, and one they? Of, uh, they do. And one of the best uh, traits of a pleasing personality is it's, it's kind of like a genuine, genuine trait. You know, uh, hopefully when people speak to me, I quite, you know, I like to think I come across as genuine. It's because I don't mind talking about real stuff. You know, I've got kind of no hidden agenda. I don't think I'm the greatest. I've still got lots to learn, and I'm happily, I will happily learn off you as anybody else listening to this type of thing. Yeah. You know, because it's just, it's just the way it is. Everyone brings something different to the table, though, as well, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. Like you don't have to have like, you could have money, you could have skills. You, you know, there's there's a million different things you could have yeah. that could offer something different, like. You know, you could there could be a homeless person on the street who knows something that you don't like. That's just the it's just a fact, and yeah, we we can't be stupid enough to think that you can't you can't class yourself above someone because of a certain exactly what thing you own. Like at the end of the day, it doesn't. We come into this life with nothing, and we leave with nothing at the end of it, and it? it's all about yeah. what happens in between. Definitely, and that's why that's why it comes back to the fact. You know, I'm not doing what I'm doing for money anymore. You know, I, because I'm well aware that it's not gonna it's not gonna go with me. And after a certain level, it doesn't really change people's lives, and that's why you know I want to be careful as well as as my kids grow up. But uh, I also know that my level of aspiration is going to, as a byproduct, generate significant sums of money, life changing sums of money. Uh, but I'm not really focused on that. You know, I just what I want, what I want to do with that when it when it gets to that point. Like one of my end goals of life is I want to be a professional investor. You know, I want to invest in good people and good ideas, but but more so the people. You know, I already know as an investor, I am more concerned about the person, the individual, than I am about the idea or business model they're in. Because if you look around you, like I said, there's a multi-million pound business in nearly anything that you see, TVs, you know, uh, AV, um, uh, technology. It's just their belief in themselves, you know, isn't it? Even, it? even tables. You know, there's multi-million pound business in just selling tables. Yeah. Uh, it all, it's all, everything is about the person. It's about the person. Yeah. I know I got like so many friends I sp- since I started doing this, like, and the, you know, this, it's not a big um, podcast or anything like that, but I got like grand visions of what it could be. I think at the end of the day, a conversation is a conversation. Like it's attractive to some people. It's just getting it out there. Yeah. But like a lot of people, I speak to a lot of people and they're like, oh, I want to do this, but I can't because of this. I'm just like, just do it. Like it doesn't matter, does it? Just do no. it. Well, like no. you've got to take, you've got to take the shot and, just believe in yourself because that's a lot of it. And I'm exactly the same thing until I started doing this. Like my belief system was like, oh, you're not worthy of this. Do you know what I mean? You don't deserve to get that. Yeah. And yeah, that translates to everything you do in life then. And everyone can see you like that. Whereas if you just go, I can do that. Bang. Yeah. And, 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 and it's so good that you've touched on that because obviously there's going to be people listening who feel the same. Uh, and it's important to note that because even, um, you know, Personally, myself, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel successful yet. You know, I don't, I feel like there's so much to do, and, and I, you know, I have the same thoughts. You know, I still, I even to this day, still, it's still those thoughts that you're not doing enough. You know, yeah. you're not doing enough. Uh, there, there's people who are who are much more experienced than you are, and 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 how can you go around talking to people about how to do property development when you know you're you're so young and you haven't done as much or you haven't you you haven't delivered uh, all of these deals in your pipeline that you should have delivered like with delivered projects but when growing a company by the time you've delivered a project you should have bigger projects in your pipeline and it's the same thing you know you're not experienced until you've delivered those but then when those come you have bigger projects you're not experienced until you've delivered those yeah and you've got to be that person along the way as well somehow haven't you you have yeah it's one of the hardest things right and i'm actually on the radio on the first of december uh oh, cool. U- uk health radio talking about um mental health in property specifically yeah. because mental health is obviously relevant in everything that anybody does uh and and some suffer obviously, obviously it's extremely more than the others but uh you know when you're doing something risky or when you're not doing something at all or you're not doing something that you feel you should be doing or even if you are and it's just it kind of everything you know it, it kicks in these thoughts kick in and having coping mechanisms is extremely important because they can literally tear you to the ground if, if yeah. you if you don't if you don't try to put something in place. And I agree with you. You know, I'm at the stage in my life because of experience. I will just do it. I am comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, I just am now. But it's very difficult if you've never been in that position. It's kind of uh, what I realized when I went to that event down in Cardiff. To be honest, I was like, 
what I see is something massive. It's like a day to day occurrence for a lot of these people in this room. And that's what was good to be there. It was like, yeah. you know, I can see the potential. Yeah. Because like, I'm no different to anyone else. That's the way I look at it. And I could do whatever I want. It's just committing and actually doing it. Definitely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's that saying, isn't it? You know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get out of the room. You know, you need, you need to be in a room where you're not the smartest person and, and you're learning and being inspired by other people. Yeah. Uh, and, and I genuinely try to do that. I'm, members, I'm a member of various clubs and I still travel the country because I still want to meet people and I still want to do things that will expose me to new connections, new experiences and provide me with more motivation. Yeah, well, it's just doing things like this. Like, I've had different opportunities come from doing this, you know. Yeah. And it's crazy, like, what doors open. Like, sometimes, to be honest with you, before I've come to do this, I'm like, oh, why am I doing that one with, like, so-and-so? or whatever? Nothing against anyone, but I'm like, yeah. what am I doing? I bet you like, thought about that with me, didn't you? So. Oh, yeah, I was going <laughs> to ring cancel. Like, <laughs> no, but you know you know what I mean? They don't yeah. You get, like, these, oh, I can't be asked tonight and whatever. And then you go in there, you have the most amazing conversation ever, and then yeah. you come out of there, and you've lined something else up from it, or they know so and so, and you're like, definitely. Yeah. Why was I even thinking like that before? Let's just go in open minded. Yeah. But it, like, I suppose everyone has an off day, everyone has a bad day. Yeah. But, but at the same time, it's like a gym. I, I like refer to it like the gym. Every time you go to the gym, you never regret the session. You only regret it when you don't go. And that's, that's the same as doing this. It's the same as a lot yeah. of things. You've just got to actually show up and do it. Definitely. You? I'm, I'm like that with the gym as well. And I, I'm a member of uh, David Lloyd. And yeah. uh, I, <laughs> I, I don't like going to the gym, but I like going to the sauna. So obviously for myself, one of my sort of, uh, uh, whatever, whatever you call it, um, there's a saying for it. I forgot what it's called. But either way, to get myself to the gym... Uh, I would, I would, I tell myself every morning I'm just going to go in the steam room, but by the time I get to the gym and through the doors, you're there. You made it. Get your mindset like changes. You know, it it does change, and that is the thing in life. But if anybody listening, I, you know, it, again, I, I don't consider myself an expert. I consider myself very active. I'm still trying to learn every day. But if anybody listening, uh, if, if you can take anything from this, it, it would literally be that you know, you want to spend some time thinking about what it is you really want and why and get a good, clear picture in your mind. Some people use like a vision board or, or anything like that. You can use post-it notes, screen savers. But I've witnessed it and I've experienced it. When you have that real driver behind you, you will develop something that the great, the late Napoleon Hill calls a, uh, uh, a white hot burning desire basically and when I was younger I read that book when again when I was 16 I never had that desire back then I've always known what I wanted to do but it's funny o o over the years it's, it's developed more and more and more and just at this stage in my life the, the fire is so intense that that you know you could send all the fire brigades around the UK to put me out and you probably couldn't <laughs> it'd still be that ember there it's, uh, but that is just the way it is but if you can find something that or if you if you find your reason why or what it is you really want, and just focus on it as well. The other the other thing is is try not to do too much. That we live in an information age. You can get drowned in information and choices and decisions because everything is instant nowadays for us. Yeah, but conflicting too. Then sometimes, isn't it? very much. So, you can't yeah. like you need to be like kind of like a point to get where you're going, don't you? Yeah. If you, if you like looking at all this, definitely you kind of got to have the blinkers on for a certain amount of time of the day, haven't you? you Otherwise do. you don't get things done. You do. I, and like, I, you know, I, I very much appreciate that, uh, you know, people shouldn't make rash decisions either. You know, if, if you're in a job and you've got a family to support and you've got no savings, the worst thing you could do is go and go in tomorrow and put 30 days notice and quit your job. <laughs> so yeah. You need without to, a plan. Without a plan. You have to have something lined up and, and get somebody more experienced than you and somebody that, is, has done your plan type of thing to review it first because they will see the unknown unknowns to you like w what you don't know you don't know yeah uh, and which is the most important things you know it's it is what it is but if you if any of your listeners can do anything like that 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 should help them and yeah. that's always my goal is whatever i do i always want to try to you know whoever spent the time to listen to this welsh voice uh, is to try and give them one thing that would benefit them effectively. That one visualization with your goals, really. Then find that reason why. What it yeah. is you want to do. There's no, there's no right or wrong. You know, and and be real with yourself as well. Just because other people, you know, want to work a hundred hours a week because that's what they want to do, doesn't mean you have to. 
Yeah. Do you know, you can literally say, I want to work from the hours of nine to five, Monday to Friday, and I want to watch TV in the weekends and play video games and be with my family. There is nothing wrong with that. No, if that's your version of happy, that's your yeah. version of happy. But it's only if, yeah, like... Because the one thing I don't like is, you know, there's there's other... And I'm not slating anybody or any people, but I see things and adverts and, and, and other, like, and these, like course and stuff where, like, berating people for not not being successful. But success is defined by you. That is the thing. You can define success. It's, yeah. It just... We're, we're all worried, though, aren't we? Like, there's a... There's a massive portion of like society which is worried what other people think about them. And that's what's majority. driving a lot of people, yeah. to be honest with you. It is, it is. And sometimes I, I catch myself doing it and I'm like, no, snap out of that. Don't care. Like, you know, you're about to walk in a room. Oh, God, am I looking like, oh, what are my clothes? Like, was this like, like, when you turned up, I'm like, oh, sorry, the house is a state. That's like yeah. preempting like you judging me. Yeah, when definitely. I don't no, know mate, if you, you are or not, you, do you know what I mean? You, but you should go into my house tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but one, one tip for that, right? One tip for that, I could. That, that literally helped me years ago. This was when I was literally, so I, I can't remember where I got it from, probably a book, is when you're feeling like that and you're trying to compare yourself to somebody, the, the, that's tech, you know, that could technically be a negative thought, right? But you want to change that to a positive thought straight away. And the easiest way to do that is when you catch yourself, don't say, um, you know, say whatever works for you, but, but instead of turning another negative, like uh, don't do that, that's bad, you know, Put a positive, and literally, if you if you're saying to yourself, uh, and I'm not I'm not just saying this, but if you're if you're thinking, God, that Dorian is so successful, you know, I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm just saying, I don't. Th- All you need to do, or what I do, what I genuinely do still today, is in my head, or if no one's around, I'll do it because otherwise I look weird. <laughs> is I will see. I'm thinking again. What other people are thinking? Yeah, well, that's it. It, it happens. It, it <laughs> does happen. Isn't it's human nature? You know, we we are um, we you know from from millennium of generation of DNA, we are we are tribes people. We want people to like us. It's just the way it is. But is in your mind, you say, you know, congratulations, fair play to him. Congratulations, well done. That's great. You know, I want to see if I can learn something from them. Yeah. Turn that into a positive straight away. Uh, and what happens is any any sort of feelings of, of comparison tends to fade away at that point. And you then turn into, I want to know how they did that. And is that something I'm interested in? And when you're trying to find out why, what it is they've done, and I tried to put that across here as well, is is understand also the negatives that come with that. You know, the, whenever, whenever there's a positive, whenever yeah. there's a positive, there is an equal negative. And you all now know what mine is. You know, I don't have a work-life balance. Yeah. I am obsessed with what I do. And I could live to regret it one day. But when you're in the moment, uh, I am thinking about it, so I'm trying to be logical, and I, I try to still carve time. But when you're in the moment and you care about something that deeply, it's very, very, very hard to just, just to not not do it, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I've been there, like, uh, last year, I was trying to set up a business on the side. It was, like, just, like, a... Chimney sweeping business, right? Like going around yeah. sweeping log burners, like there's money in that. Like people wouldn't believe, to be honest with you. But I was doing that on the side. And um, like I was working 40 hours a week in my day job. I was working four nights a week every Saturday. Yeah. And then like when COVID lockdown and stuff happened, I stopped doing it. And that was the only time then I realized like that was like kind of a kick for me of going like me and my missus were having like a bit, not a tough time. Like we were, we were all right. But just because when you're not there, it's hard to keep a relationship going like I found. Yeah. Because you just, well, to have a relationship, you've kind of got to spend time with them a little bit, haven't you? A relationship, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So I just, that was, for me, I was like, like, that's a realisation. Like, what am I doing this? I realised what I was throwing away compared to what I was gaining just wasn't worth it. So I made a calculated decision to stop that. Yeah. Now I find myself in a position where I'm like, I still want change. Yeah. You know, so still, I'm still searching like the same as everyone, but, yeah, you know. But again, and you don't have to answer on here, obviously it's... Uh, Change is such a broad word. Do you know what I mean? It's such a broad yeah, word. Pinpoint it. Change. Like there are literally companies out there that specialize in something called change management <laughs> in companies, right? But uh, because again, sometimes companies need to change, but they don't know. They don't know what they want. They don't know what they don't know. And w- what I'm saying with that is, is trying to figure out what it is you want, and that that is that is harder than people think, because a lot of people. Don't know what they want. Yeah. You no. Know, uh, 
I know what I want. <laughs> yeah, I do know what I want. You do know what you want. I do know what I oh, want. That's good. It's half the battle right there. Yeah, yeah. I want this to be successful. This is what I want. Great. I'm sure it will be, yeah. Yeah, that's the you goal. you got me as a guest. That's the goal. No, I'm, joking, I'm, joking. Mate, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, but I just yeah. think like, if I just, like my vision for this is to get good, genuine people in with good stories. Yeah. You know, well, some people who haven't always been genuine in their life and they've turned it around, you know. Yeah. And I think like there's power in that for me, like a life-changing moment was doing a, uh, listening to podcasts because years ago, like I went through a stage of like depression and whatever, feeling like suicidal and stuff. Yeah. And I just couldn't get out of the rut. And then it was only listening to other people who've done it. Yeah. So, like, so on so podcasts powerful. and stuff. And I was like, yeah. they've been through so much. Like my reasons for being in that state were like minor compared to a lot. Yeah. Still there, all the same. And it may take a little for some people. It takes a lot for others. Yeah. But like listening to people you tell their stories and stuff just yeah. completely changed my life. I was like. And on their coping mechanisms and stuff, you know, yeah. actually listening. And like you, obviously, I can tell there's been a time where you've struggled because you were talking about coping mechanisms. Yeah. You didn't look for them until something went wrong. Most people don't believe it when they when I speak to them, but it's nearly every day for me. You know, it's uh, I, obviously I'm involved in a lot and, and there's a lot of pressure. But but one of the, my biggest pressures is myself. You know, when, like when I'm coming across and saying how much I love what I do and, it, and, and it's it's obsessive, that alone there is a problem it's a, yeah. it's a problem that i have to deal with on a daily basis it's it's one of those things it's very difficult to explain to people uh what 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 that feels like when you're when you can um kind of easily cut off people around you uh in the uh, and it, it come you know people from the outside in without an explanation will just deem that as selfish pure selfish but it's it's very difficult because your internal driver that that these voices in your head they the the I have full blown arguments in my head. Yeah. <laughs> you chasing like it's like addiction though, isn't it? Cut, yeah, like really, because yeah. when I was doing that before the other business, I was like, it was like if I was getting a job in, I'm doing it. There was no like, have I got time for that? Or yeah. oh, if I do that, we're not going to be in the missus. I'm going to be able to. I was doing it no matter what. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just what it is. Learn to live with it. But it was only like the time off. Yeah. Like sometimes when you need to step when you step out of your environment, you can actually look at it bird's eye, can't you? Definitely. Like you're yeah. obviously. Balls deep, like it's just like yeah. You, you, but I, but I try to do have a lot of reflective time as well. Uh, but every time I do, it's because I, I'm very much then strategic in the business type of thing, and I think about things strategically. And I try to get myself away from the operational tasks. And obviously, I have a, I have a very experienced team that's growing that deal with the operational tasks. And I'm very much constantly driving for that that strategic growth and the strategic change. And uh, but and uh, yeah, and it's just you know when I try to take time out, you know I have these, uh, I just, it's, I just cannot wait to get back. You know Monday is my favorite day. Yeah. You know it's uh, it's crazy to most. Monday but that's a good way to is be. my favorite day. You wouldn't believe, right? Because everything shuts down on a Sunday, and I just cannot wait for Monday to come around. Yeah. So, uh, may I respect your passion and just before. Do you mind, I've got a couple of questions off people. Sure. Um, I put like a post out earlier on my Instagram. Right. Let's have a look. Two seconds, mate. Problem. I like to get, you know, people from the community in really to ask the questions because at the end of the day, like I can ask what I want, but you never really know what, what other people are thinking. And I will say just a shout out as well. You know, my, my wife is absolutely fantastic. She's bought into the vision as well. You know, she, she understands what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. And she is, you know, she is a massive support mechanism for me. And, um, she's just like one in a billion. You just can't That's so important, you can't find it? people like that, you know? So I'm incredibly lucky. Yeah. Cause sometimes it's hard. It, it, if you were having friction at home all the time, like it's oh, it's going to be very difficult you, you to keep cannot, going, isn't it? You cannot sustain it. Yeah, one thing will give, yeah. one one thing will break. And my wife is, you know, she has sacrificed for for me to do what I'm doing. Simple. Yeah. It is what it is, and I'm just lucky she's done that. Hundred percent, mate. Yeah, because that's not easy to come by. But um, one one of the questions, I don't know if if, if this is how you do it or not, but he said. When slash why is it better to purchase a portfolio via a limited company? I don't know if that's... Yeah, so so they've listened to all of that. This is literally, we've gone into the real life. You know, we've gone into the deep stuff. We have, yeah. This we, is, we, this we is just like, avoided property. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of glad. Because that's, to, to be honest with me, it's more about what, it is about life and it's what makes yeah. people tick over like, I don't think I'll, it's the other one is like, how do you limit exposure to stamp duty in Wales? Well, that's like a very 
you know, government website you get on there, isn't it? But <laughs> yeah, that's a specific question. But to answer to answer it though, uh, in terms of limit your exposure to stamp duty, I mean, uh, in in terms of like things you can do, uh, be careful because <laughs> I've actually I'm actually having discussions with Welsh uh, uh, land tran- land transaction tax now, uh, the Welsh Re- uh, the Welsh Revenue Authority because of uh, doing. You know, I bought two properties uh, at the same time together. One was uh, one was derelict and uninhabitable, so I claimed them. Well, me and my tax advisors claimed them as a, as a mixed use purchase, and I saved about twelve thousand stamp duty. Anyway, they're going um, uh, apes over it, <laughs> so I'm I'm dealing with that. You know, the worst case scenario, I'll have to pay it back, which which is fine. But you know, it, in terms of uh, trying to avoid, you're not going to avoid it really. So in terms of what you can do to mitigate stamp duty, uh, is a couple of, it depends on the property. I mean, obviously anything under 40,000, there's no stamp duty on it anyway. Um, if you can try and do mixed, mixed use schemes. So, uh, if you've, if they're uninhabitable and genuinely are, and you, you take photos and get a building survey as well, because the Welsh Revenue Authority will ask for that as evidence. And, uh, uh, and, and and if you can buy multiple properties at the same time, you'll get some other form of relief as well. But ultimately, if you 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 will end up paying it, you know we pay it all the time. So just factor it into your appraisal and factor it into your negotiation process, so you can genuinely buy it at the price that will support you paying that stamp duty. If that makes sense. Yeah. So that's just one tip. And what was the other question? Sorry. Um, two seconds. Sorry, I've. I think it was buying a property via a limited company. Like, what's the benefits? Uh, right. So again, that in terms of buying properties through a limited company, uh, is it more beneficial than buying it through an individual person? That is actually a case by case basis. I would recommend you speak to a tax advisor. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not regulated as one, so I can't give you formal advice. But my informal opinion is that if because uh, we've looked at this, you know, I've got limited companies with my portfolio in. Uh, the, the obviously the question you know you all know about section uh, the, the land the landlord tax as they call it about uh, mortgage interest yeah the, the right ta- no I don't to be honest right. with you so uh, basically before uh, I can't remember when it was now a couple of years ago you would be able to as a private landlord you would be able to if you have rent of five hundred pound a mortgage of interest only of two hundred pound and just say you profit of three hundred pound you would be able to um, take the whole £200 off the 500 and just pay tax on the 300 right. right? But if you're employed and you're a higher rate taxpayer, what they introduced now is uh, it, it's what people call the, the landlord the landlord tax or the... Capital uh, gains, is it? No, this is, this is a mortgage interest relief, effectively. So what they've done is they've said, we, we're now going to take that £500. We're going to ignore that £200 and the mortgage interest uh, thing. So you're paying tax on the 500 minus a 20% tax credit on the interest, which obviously makes it worse off if you're a higher rate taxpayer. Uh, and, and you know, that can cause you a big problem. If you have a portfolio like that, then you're in for seeing big trouble. But if it's, um, if your personal circumstances are which you are employed by your limited company and you're actually on a very small amount personally, and, uh, you know, you might not actually see any benefit because by the time you factor into your accountant's cost for a limited company, which is more, and um, and potentially higher rate mortgage costs because they can they can cost more than by a single um, yeah, higher private, interest private rates owners. on a mortgage and yeah, it can the can be it, dep- it depends on the gearing and 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 their experience and the credit and all that sort of stuff. But uh, again, see, it gets quite technical, but. The, the problem is it's case by case. It is really case by case. Uh, you know, I genuinely know people, when you do the maths, you know, your tax advisor will do the maths with you and, and, and also talk about your future plans. Obviously, it's recommended that if you're going to be buying more properties, then you probably want to buy them in a limited company if you're going to keep buying and buying because eventually it will become uh, problematic for you. But yeah, so so speak to a tax advisor, but I hope that was just a snippet of, you know, couple of things you should you should be you should be aware of definitely one one more question i wanted to ask you is like what's your biggest mistake and how did you deal with it oh i've made tons of mistakes i literally made i have made hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of mistakes and i will still make mistakes 
you know, I'm a big fan of just learning lessons and lessons learned. Every time we do a project in our company, we do a presentation called Lessons Learned, and each part of the division needs to present their lessons learned, and and then that will be uh, tracked of how they're being implemented going forward, uh, and so forth. But you know, like I said, I've been involved in lots of different businesses, and I've made lots of different mistakes. I've lost all my money at one point when I was obviously younger by putting all of my money in, and not uh, and and forgetting about the customer you know that's a big lesson don't forget about the customer the other big lesson is literally don't focus on the money you know make money a byproduct of what you do the other lesson as well is that you need to get great people around you you need to employ great people and not scrimp on people you genuinely do you know if you get great people to run a great system and you follow a great strategy you will have undoubtedly a great business and if your strategy and systems are, are very good and, and very great, you just need good people. But it's still better to have great people because they're nice to be around. You yeah. have A players around you. You know, those are just those are literally just a few things. I've got a lot more lessons as well, but yeah, that could just go on. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to have you back, mate. We'll have to have you back. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. When you're gazillionaire, we'll have you back. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I really appreciate the time you've spent with me this evening, you know, and uh, I really thank every single one of your listeners for also taking the time to listen to me. And I wish you, and I wish yourself, and I wish all of your viewers the very best of luck on everything that you do. Find out what it is you really want to do. And remember that you can genuinely achieve most things. It's just, it's just you've got to really want it. Yeah. No, I appreciate you coming down, mate. Honestly, it's good to uh, good to spend the time, I think, as well. There's some definite nuggets in there for people to take and use in their life, me included. So Pleasure. I appreciate it. And yeah, uh, we'll catch up again in the future. Cheers, Thank mate. you. Nice Thank fun. you. Cheers now. Awesome. Bye, man. Experience Real Podcast.